Hello there guys, welcome back to Unis Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, as we've got things to get through today, now it's been an eventful day online for Chelsea fans, um, if you know, you know, uh, um, look, if, if you don't know what I'm referring to, you can go to my Unis Talks Football Twitter, and read what I had to say there, that's it, <laughs> and you'll, you'll understand why. I'm not mentioning it any further here. If you know, you know. If you don't, well, I've just pointed you in the right direction. You can do, go and do some digging there. But take the advice that I've put on there and everything will be cushy. As Del Boy used to once say back when Only Fools and Horses was on the television. Um, and cushy is the feeling right now for all of us as Chelsea fans. Life is all right. It's all right. I don't want to get carried away and pretend that everything, that everything's fixed. That's it. We're done. Like, no. But we have to give credit where it's deserved. And right now we're feeling better than we definitely have felt over a very long time. And one of those reasons why, like I said yesterday after the game in that review, I did end with a certain bit of news, which is what we're going to begin this video with in relation to trying to expand on what went down in that bit of news that I gave you, which is to do with a... Are we finally going to get something on our shirts? Finally? Well, we might actually be heading in that direction and we've got a lowdown. So let's get right into it. Here it is. So Chelsea are in talks with Qatar Airways as the front of shirt sponsor. Last week, Qatar Airways signed a massive six-year UEFA Champions League deal worth £70 million a year, around there. As um, Cave from Sky Sports reports, the club is still negotiating with other major airlines. According to my source, the club is in contact with Riyadh Air and Turkish Airlines. For the Turkish carrier, it would be a second chance to become a shirt sponsor. In 2015, Turkish Airlines had already signed an initial agreement with Chelsea worth 25 million a year, which ultimately collapsed due to a better offer from Yokohama Rubber. Now, Yokohama Rubber were not our, a, um, our, our shirt sponsor, right? Well, Yokohama were. Tell a lie. Sorry. Yokohama, after they were our shirt sponsor, they did stay in relations with Chelsea. So they were our official tyre partner. If you just want to... Why have we got a tyre partner? I don't know. But you get the gist. They were our shirt sponsor. After that, even though they weren't on our, on our shirts any longer, and we did move on to three, if you remember three. <laughs> I, I remember them. Snakes. Um, but, um, after that... They did still remain as part of the club in some sort of a capacity. 25 million a year, I'm sorry, is low. I get, I get, don't get me wrong. I get that Chelsea right now are in a situation, right? Um, we may look a little desperate. We don't have Champions League football. We're playing Conference League. Yeah, it's not great. Um, as results begin to improve the more hope that there is that we will get Champions League football, the more that the bargaining power comes into our favour. So this is where, even right now, the performances right now matter. They do. Because then you can give at least some sort of a assurance, I guess, that, don't worry, look, we're on the way to something pretty big here. If you sponsor us, we'll get you Champions League exposure. This is where maybe you can try and up the feet. Infinite Athlete, who we're, at, who we're with at the moment, or well, we're not, because we don't have a shirt sponsor, but who, we, who we, were, we were with last season, and now they're on the sleeve. That was 40 million a year, right? This is why I said it yesterday, I'll say it again. Instead of going back and forth with these companies that are not so sure, like Turkish Airlines, I think would be a great sponsor, but I think it'd look good too. But you could just tell there'd be quite a bit of negotiating, I'm telling you, Qatar Airways, it'd be, it'd be just, it'd be a no-brainer. Hey, Habibi, Habibi, sign the contract, Habibi. There's no talking, sign it. Chelsea, you, we sponsor, yes, we sponsor you. No problem, no problem. Hey, Habibi, sign it, sign it, sign the paper. Sign, the, not the paper, because in Arabic they don't pronounce P's. Sign the paper, sign the paper, sign it. <laughs> so, um, listen... 
Real Day is another one, but I've got a feeling. Look, with Real Day, it's, compl it's, it's a bit complex because I feel like we would have already had it done with Real Day. What's the hold up? Real Day, we heard about Real Day a time ago. Nothing's happened. Why? So that's, even if we're talking with them, I don't feel like anything will happen there. Listen, Qatar Airways would be a phenomenal sponsor. Phenomenal sponsor. Get that done. ASAP, Chelsea. ASAP. Thank you very much. So, that's that. Let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. Who do you want? Who do you want? Who do you prefer? Let me know down below. I'd love to hear your opinion. Fabrizio's decided to come with a little bit of um, late news. I'm, I'm, um, why has this come out now and not before? Anyway, let's get into this. Here it is. So, Chelsea had the opportunity to sell Mudrick this summer. The German club offered a concrete possibility. But Chelsea said no. They keep trusting his potential, but they want to see a development also with the coaching staff. Mudrik's performance this season will be important for his future. I think we might have made a mistake here. Yeah, if you had the chance to sell him, you should have done it. You should have done it. But I also have to play devil's advocate here and be fair. Was this by deadline day or was this before? Because if we had only got Pedro Neto in, right? For example, we got Neto in, we got Sancho on deadline day. Only after this was the case, then I understand. Because you don't want to leave yourself without any wingers. Like, if that's the case, fair. But if we had the chance to be able to sell him after we got Neto and Sancho on deadline day, then we should have done it. Because... I don't see how his value is going to increase for this season, even if we keep him. I, I don't see how. Let's see, though. Maybe he gets conference league games. Maybe he can play well in those. I feel like we've got to really micromanage him correctly. Like, what do I mean by that? I feel like we even need to select the right games, games that we know surely he performs. Just those games. That way, by the time it comes to the end of the season, psychologically... Maybe people would have gone, oh, you know, maybe he's not, he's not too bad. He's not, and we'll be like, yeah, no, he's great. <laughs> but if you, say for example, you play him conference league games and then you play him for a few Premier League games and he puts in stinkers there, well, that doesn't help. So conference league might be it. Just maybe even just the early stages. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, let me know your thoughts on that one. But yeah, Mudrik, I think it's a long day for him if I'm being completely honest. Now, that's that. Let's see what happens. Now, again, I didn't expect this. Yeah? And um, I like to be honest with you guys. So for positive or for negative, for good or for bad, I tell you how it is, right? I don't shy away. I've been praising Maresco a lot lately. And then he said something after the game yesterday, and I'm just like, listen, mate, you've got to stop, because I'm beginning to like you a bit too much here, mate. <laughs> I got, uh, um, the, Maresco, listen, look, uh, you're flirting a bit too much here, yeah? Keep it cool, look, we've only had our first date, yeah? <laughs> Let's go for a second or a third and we'll see what happens after, basically, yeah? Because this is getting a bit too much. <laughs> Here's what he had to say. Check this out. So, he was asked about his attacking options and whether having all of those options is, is, is good for him. And he says, well, Jackson, Nkunku, Palmer, Madueke, fantastic. And he mentioned this in relation to how he'd love to be able to play all of them at the same time, but he can't. Yeah, and the reason for that as well is Jackson and Kunku Palmer Madueke fantastic, but then who is defending me and you? Well, basically, and I'll I'll read you I'll read you this um, so you get clarity, right? Um, I can't show you the clip because of copyright, but he says the problem is the balance of defence as well because he, we can think to play with Nicholas. Christopher, Jao, Cole, Palmer, Noni, fantastic, right? But then who is defending? Me and you, we go, we need to run back. That's the problem. Um, he says, I would like to, to put all of them because I really like football and I really like to keep the ball. But the problem is that when you lose the ball, then you have to defend and not all of them 
not all of them can defend at the same level. One of my concerns that I had um, when Maresca showed up was, uh, is he going to be able to differentiate the attacking side with the defensive side and prioritise that instead of, because I know there's some people that have this obsession with like possession-based football and attacking football, that they just neglect defending. Like defending, uh, d defending is the antichrist. We used to do a lot of that, so we don't want to do any of that anymore. Like, no, that's not how football works. And obviously he knows that defending is important, but... For him to be able to really, really, even based on the selection of the attacking players that he has, basing it on how they can defend for the team, fills me with some assurances. Yeah? So, again, look, so far, Maresca, good job. Good job. Good job. I can't complain. I can't complain. Um, so far, I like the geezer. I've got to be honest. Got to be honest. We all had doubts. Right? Championship manager. And we still do. Because the season isn't six games. Yeah? It has to continue. At Chelsea Football Club, there's a level. But that level right now, yeah, it's being hit. Great. Keep it up. <laughs> Keep it up, mate. Keep it up. And on top of that, he seems like a no-nonsense gaffer. No-nonsense, you know. And I love, I love no-nonsense. Come, on, This is why I love Jose. You know, someone that's just like, listen, it just tell, tell, tells it as it is. Boom, straight on the money. Listen, you like it, I like it. You don't like it, get out. He comes across as that so far. So even in terms of my style of manager, uh, I like it. Keep it up, keep it up. Now, another thing I didn't think we'd see, so I didn't think we'd see that, that early anyway. Well, we're seeing something else. Check this out. I didn't think we'd see this. And I've mentioned it before. We got Netflix and chill, ladies and gentlemen. Netflix and chill. Let me point that again so you can see the cursor. Netflix and chill. <laughs> Mad. Chill world look. It's like I said, I thought he was dead. Yeah, I, I thought his time was over at Chelsea Football Club. And when Netflix did show up, Pedro Neto and Jao Felix, we did mention, you know, and I remember I, remember I said it on the video, I was like, what a shame. It's a shame Chill World's basically going to be leaving the club. We're not ever going to see Netflix and chill. Well, we got it last night against Barrow. <laughs> Fantastic. Shout out Barrow. Because if it wasn't for Barrow, Chill World wouldn't have played. Barrow made Netflix and chill show up. So big up to Barrow. And look, I really love the camaraderie between the Chelsea and the Barrow fans. Um, even in the, in the, on social media, a load of Chelsea fans were leaving well wishes and best wishes for the season. Hope you do well. I did it myself. Um, and Barrow fans really appreciated that. You could see the feedback from them was, oh, you lot are really classy. Thank you all so much. Was a pleasure. But, but beautiful. Just very nice. Very nice. So good luck to Barrow. Man. I like you lot. I like you lot. Um, good luck. I'm, I'm a, look, League Two teams, I'm going to be supporting Barrow. Come on. What are, what's the nickname for Barrow? What's the, um, let me, what's, what's their, what are they called? What are they, like, we're the Blues. What are they? They are. Do they even have a nickname? <laughs> I can't see a nickname. Um, oh, the Bluebirds. The Bluebirds. Oh, that's a beautiful nickname. I can't even lie. The Bluebirds. Hey, you know, like, that's, that's, there's a little relation there. You know, Blues, Bluebirds. Like... You get me. You get me. Anyway, go and do your thing, Barrow. Good luck. <laughs> now, I want to end on something. I think it's important we keep paying attention to the Chelsea Academy, right? We saw Tyreek George and Achiempon come on yesterday. i got to be honest, not the best performance, <laughs> right? But um, it's important to look at who's coming through and when the gem does come through, allow them to come through. Keep your eye on this boy. Ibrahim Rabaj, 15, is another star in the making at Cobham. Right, He was also called up for the under-16 English national team. Now, he is Moroccan originally, but born and bred, I guess born and bred. I know he's bred, whether he's born, I think he is, in England. 40 games at under-16 level for Chelsea. 52 goals, 60 assists. Right? And that's him with Ziyech, because obviously Ziyech is Moroccan, and there's a... There's a there's a compatriot bond there. And um, he looks like Mason Mount when he was eight. 
<laughs> Basically, same hairdo. But um, Ibrahim Rabaj here, look, I want to make it clear. At academy level, goals is pretty normal. Yeah, At academy level, you do get some crazy scores. You do get like 9-2, um, 6-4, um, 10-7. That can exist at academy level. Yeah, it does happen. At that age, not senior academy level, that starts to get a bit serious because tactically things start brushing it up. But at that level, low, like kids, that's normal. So when he comes out with these stats, it can be deemed as normal-ish, but even those numbers are a bit too high. 40 games, I would say 40 games, 40 goals would be deemed as, yeah, for a good attacker, that can be standard. 52 goals and 60 assists. Keep your eye on this boy. Just at least keep your eye on this boy. Yeah, and I look forward to maybe hearing his name in the not so distant future. Maybe in a couple of years from now, maybe he comes through and we give him a few minutes in the Carabao Cup. Maybe, maybe at 17 years old, who knows? So um, we keep our eye. We keep our eye on this on this boy, Rabaj, Moroccan English national. So. End it there. Let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. Um, do not forget to hit the subscribe button, notification bell on, as well as the socials that are on the screen for you right now. I'm active on these. These are my personal personal Insta, personal Twitter, as well as the Eunice Talks Football socials. All in the description. Make sure you're following and I will catch all of you tomorrow for a brand new one. Have a good one, people. See you a lot tomorrow. Take care and peace.